The anal canal is the terminal part of the large intestine. It is the continuation of the rectum. It begins where the rectal ampulla narrows. This is at the level of puborectalis part of levator ani muscle. The inside of the anal canal can be described as upper part and lower part of the anal canal. The upper part of the anal canal is characterized by the presence of anal columns. These are longitudinal ridges in the superior half of the mucous membrane of the anal canal. They contain the terminal branches of the superior rectal artery and vein. The superior end marks the anorectal junction, while the lower ends of these anal columns, they are joined by anal valves. These anal valves are semilunar flaps that join the lower ends of the columns. This comb-shaped limit of the anal valves will mark the junction between the upper part and lower part of the anal canal and is called the pectinate line which means comb shaped. If we look at the anal canal from a side view, you can see here one of these valves from the side. Behind each valve, there is a sinus. Into the sinus open mucus glands, and these glands exude mucus when they are compressed by feces. Now let's deal with the embryological origin of the pectinate line because this will help understand better the differences between the upper and lower part of the anal canal. The upper part of the anal canal is the terminal part of the hindgut. So it is of endodermal origin. Proliferation of ectoderm closes the caudal part of the anal canal. So the caudal part of the anal canal originates in the ectoderm. The junction between the upper part and lower part of the anal canal is marked by the anal membrane. This membrane breaks down during development. If it fails to break down, then this results in imperforate anus. But naturally, it breaks down and the anal canal is perforated so that the ectoderm and endoderm part of the anal canal are continuous and the remains of the membrane, of the anal membrane, is indicated by the pectinate line. The pectinate line is also called the mucocutaneous line because the lining epithelium above the pectinate line is columnar epithelium. It is similar to that of the rectum and uh, the epithelium below the pectinate line is made of stratified uh, squamous epithelium. The anal canal is related to sphincters external anal sphincter and internal anal sphincter. This is the internal anal sphincter. The internal anal sphincter surrounds the upper two-thirds of the anal canal and it is in fact a thickening of the circular muscle coat of the rectum. I'm drawing it on one side. This is the internal anal sphincter. The external anal sphincter is made of three parts of skeletal muscle fibers. The most superficial part is called the subcutaneous part and then we have the superficial part and then the deep part of the external anal sphincter. As you can see that the external anal sphincter surrounds the lower two-thirds of the anal canal and the deepest part of it it fuses with the puborectalis part of the levator ani muscle at the anorectal ring. This is the site of the anorectal ring, which is marked by the upper end of the anal columns of Morgagni. The internal anal sphincter, being formed of smooth muscle, is innervated by autonomic nerves, and the external anal sphincter, made of skeletal muscle, is innervated by somatic nerves. The internal anal sphincter is involuntary, while the external is the voluntary sphincter. Now, although the anal canal is only 4 cm in length, but because of its embryonic origin from two distinct parts, ectoderm and endoderm, 
This difference in embryological origin is reflected on many features of the anal canal. The first one, as we have noticed, is the lining epithelium. Second is the blood supply of the anal canal. The blood supply of the anal canal above the pectinate line is derived from the superior rectal artery, which is a branch of the inferior mesenteric artery. Below the pectinate line, the blood supply is derived from the inferior rectal artery, which is a branch of the internal pudendal artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery. Sometimes the middle rectal artery participates in the supply and assists in the forming, formation of anastomosis between the superior and inferior rectal artery. This is an inconstant branch and it is derived from internal iliac artery. The lymphatics, to some extent, they follow the blood supply. So lymphatic vessels from the upper part of the anal canal are drained together with the inferior rectal vessels. They are drained into the inferior mesenteric and therefore to the pre-aortic lymph nodes. While lymphatics from the lower part of the anal canal, they drain with the perineum to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes and, and hence into the uh, external iliac, common iliac and para-aortic lymph nodes. Thus, an infected ulcer or a tumor affecting the lower part of the anal canal is accompanied by enlargement of the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. The difference in embryological origin is also reflected on the nerve supply of the anal canal. So the upper part of the anal canal derives its nerve supply from the inferior hypogastric plexus. It is an autonomic innervation. Thus the upper part of the anal canal is sensitive to distension. These same nerves also supply the internal anal sphincter, the involuntary sphincter that is made of smooth muscles. The lower part of the anal canal has a somatic innervation and the nerve supply is derived from the inferior rectal nerve which is a branch of the pudendal nerve from the sacral plexus. Being supplied by somatic nerves, it is sensitive to pain, touch and temperature. This same nerve that supplies sensation to the lower part of the anal canal is motor to the external anal sphincter. Thus a painful condition affecting the lower part of the anal canal, like fissure in ano, is accompanied by spasm of the external anal sphincter because it's the same inferior rectal nerve that supplies both the lining of the anal canal below the pectinate line and the muscle. Finally, the differences between upper and lower part of the anal canal is reflected on the venous drainage. Beneath the mucosa of the upper part of the anal canal, there is a plexus of veins, submucosal plexus of veins. The internal rectal venous plexus drains superiorly into the superior rectal vein. The superior rectal vein drains into the inferior mesenteric vein, which uh, joins the portal circulation as it joins the splenic vein and then the splenic joins the superior mesenteric forming the portal vein. So the drainage of the upper part of the anal canal above the pectinate line is to the portal system. The lower part of the anal canal, the veins accompany the arteries and they are drained into the inferior rectal vein. The inferior rectal vein is a tributary of the internal pudendal, internal iliac, common iliac and inferior vena cava. So here at this location, there is a portal caval anastomosis at the pectinate line between tributaries of the portal system and tributaries of the inferior vena cava. There is also a middle rectal vein sometimes that uh, drains the wall and participate in this anastomosis. This middle rectal vein drains again into the systemic circulation. The vascular mucosa of the anal columns is thickened in three regions to form what we call the anal cushions. These mucosal thickenings or anal cushions are located at 3, 7 and 11 o'clock in the lithotomy position. They form a sort of a valve that contributes 
to the water and gas tight closure of the rectum. Prolapse of these cushions which contain the rectal venous plexus will create internal hemorrhoids. Here is a tributary of the superior rectal vein from the plexus, mucosal plexus of veins. Prolapse of these rectal cushions results from breakdown of the muscularis mucosa and those prolapsed cushions contain the veins. These are internal hemorrhoids which affect the upper part of the anal canal. This prolapse might continue to the outside containing the veins and so these veins might get strangulated. The prolapsed hemorrhoids easily bleed because they contain the mucosal venous plexus and bleeding here is usually of bright red blood because of abundant arteriovenous anastomosis in the region. Disorders that impede the venous return predispose to hemorrhoids. Sometimes the tributaries of the inferior rectal vein get thrombosed and this results in external hemorrhoids. These external hemorrhoids are covered by skin and therefore they receive somatic innervation and are very painful. The internal hemorrhoids which are derived from the upper part of the anal canal, they receive visceral sensation and are thus not painful unless complicated.